Hello and welcome back to Tommy's Top Picks Weekly Roundup Podcast episode 141. The death of Magic the Gathering. It's here. It's come. Magic's over. Pack your bags. It's over. That's right. Get rid of your cards now. Immediately. Sell everything. It's I'm your over. host, Tommy, joined by John. <laughs> How's it going? Good. Good. Um it's a dramatic setup there. Yeah. Yeah. We had we are a little late to this party, but have opinions, and I'm sure people want to hear our opinions on Very the latest important. death. Yeah. There are dozens of you. There are dozens <laughs> of you that want to hear our opinion um, on the magic bands that were happening, have happened, and Commander are not going to be reversed. Um, and some other things. Yeah. Going to talk a little bit about Star Wars. Going to talk a little bit about... Uh, Sorcery. Sorcery. Talk, yeah, there's some a little stuff happening there. Nothing, okay. nothing too crazy. Yeah. Same with uh, Star Wars, nothing crazy. Just some event stuff we can talk about. Yep. I was talking about last night. Um, but yeah, you want to get into the Commander Vance? I have, we haven't fully talked, so I don't really know what your opinions are on it. I have no cat in the race. I don't. I didn't own any of these cards. Uh, agreed. I did own some of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so it made me. A little sad, but not like actually sad because I don't honestly care. Um, right. Right. Uh, <clears throat> the only reason it made it me sad is because it was probably one of the most valuable cards I've pulled, which is Jeweled Lotus. Uh, okay. um, so I have a copy of it. I was not going to sell it, period, because it was a useful card, expensive card, and I play yeah. Commander. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. in my collection. It's actually it might be in a deck. I need to double check that. Um, so it's, you know, whatever. It's no longer usable for Commander, except that Commander's a casual format. And several of the people of our pod have already said, we don't care. We're going to play with the band cards anyways. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I got a Commander game in yesterday with some friends. Yeah. And they said the same thing. Yeah, it's a freaking casual format, people. Yeah. I don't understand why this has made so much news. I'll be honest with you. This is like... It, well, for I, tournaments I, and stuff. I, what tournaments? At every SCG con. What tournaments? There's tons the of tournaments. 16 person CEDH? No, they're much bigger than 16 person. The CEDH ones, though, yeah. right? Yeah. Guess what? CEDH is different. This should, doesn't matter. So should the bands just be in CEDH and EDH it, be alone? No, alone? Wait, 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 one topic at a time. One topic at a time. <laughs> First off, this is a casual format. Yes. It's a casual format where you rule zero, whatever the hell you want, including proxies, which and is bands. super common. Yeah. yeah. And bands. Right. Super common. Uh, so oh, what yeah. the, the people I rules... played with was almost 100% proxies. Yeah. That's what I mean. Rules committee matter to, to 90% of commander players. No, no, uh, I don't think it does. Uh, does it matter for the shop commander players? Yes. That's where yeah. it's, that's the gray area. Does it matter for CEDH? I don't think so because those crazy bastards want to make the most optimized deck and they don't really give a crap what that is. Right. Right. Like I don't think this impacts them much. Yes. They have to remake some decks. It's not going to be as fast and efficient. This actually is probably the most, I'm not sure if it's beneficial, but most interesting for them because they have to rebuild stuff. Right. Everyone else doesn't give a crap. (laughs) I don't know. I did not see it as a big deal uh it was immediate in, in our little pod it, immediately people freaked out and, and were upset because they have a bunch of these cards mostly about the financial value loss that's um, yeah sure that was the the one area where i see a lot of people freaking out and i get the that for some people i i honestly think the same thing i've always said on this channel which is if you have money in it it should be money you're willing to throw away because mm-hmm. things like this happen yes frequently in card yes. games like it's All not a financial instrument it's a hobby that yeah. can make money can can if you're lucky make money yeah. but it's totally a gamble and you should expect it to not because that way you'll be pleasantly surprised instead of unexpectedly disappointed and feel like you're losing your shirt which you yeah. don't want right um so 
I don't know. For me, it's not that big of a deal. I did have, you know, it's funny. You know how I'm bad with like names of things, right? Mm -hmm. I mixed up so many things. I thought Dockside Extortionist was Ragavan, which I just recently pulled. And I was like, oh man, that stinks. That was the one card I pulled originally <laughs> that was really valuable. And when I came back, I was like, wait, that's not Ragavan. I was like, no. wait, that's Ragavan wasn't banned. I thought Ragavan was banned. Nope. <laughs> Dockside Extortionist. I almost yeah. bought a Dockside like when we were playing Commander on TTS yeah. a couple, yeah. like a month or two ago. Um, yeah. I almost bought a Dockside and a Jewel Lotus and all three of those cards, actually. If I was to build the deck that I was playing, yeah, all three of those cards were in it. Yeah, I, I've, uh, like I said, I don't think I've ever used my Jeweled Lotus. It may be in one deck now that I was using it to optimize it a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, Dockside, I can't remember if I own one or not. I may. Uh, and then Mana Crypt, I've been on the verge of buying for a while. Uh, yeah. But they're just really expensive, and I didn't really want it, and da-da-da-da-da. Same with Mana Vault, which, interestingly, has spiked and basically mm -hmm. replaced Mana Crypt, which yep. is... The whole thing is so silly. Like, I, who cares what these stupid rules committee people say? And okay, there's commander tournaments out there, but... Because they're definitely playing, not affiliated with Wizards at all. I mean, they aren't officially, but officially. they definitely chat with yeah. them. Yeah. I mean, that's that's pretty clear. Uh I, I don't know, man. I, it's a casual format. It's yeah. a primarily casual format. I just say, and and for example, because I started looking into going to shops to play Commander, just because mm -hmm. I've had a hard time. Our schedules haven't met up very well, yeah. so we've only been able to play TTS. Um, so I was like, oh, I, I kind of want to play in person again. It's been a while. So I was double checking. I didn't have proxies on this. And then I look at uh, our local uh, uh, EDH day or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the rules are very simple. It's like, if you have official decks, you can play in the official. If you don't, there's a section of the store where a bunch of people gather and play completely casual. So just rule zero or whatever the heck you want over there. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it even at our shop, it doesn't matter because there's a whole section of the shop that just <laughs> plays with whatever, you know, they don't, yeah. you know, they don't care. So, um, so yeah, point being, I don't know why people are so upset. I mean, I get the financial value thing. Like people, if you had multiple, if you were seriously into it, and you had like multiple copies for multiple decks of multiples of these cards, yeah, you could, you're but, out. I don't know. You're out. You could be out a decent amount. Yeah, but again, if you have multiple copies for multiple decks, they were for the decks, and you can play with them still in plenty of places. And I don't. I honestly, <laughs> this is really what I think about it these cards are somewhat power abusive. And yeah. so you're either skirting with CDH, but are too afraid to actually try. Yeah. And, and, and you should just go for it and try if you can't afford it. I get it. Right. Right. Or you're trying to spike tables. <laughs> yes, exactly. And if you're trying to spike tables, then you're not, in my opinion, playing correctly. Like, relax it's a yeah. casual format have a little fun my goal at any pod is to get a 25 percent win rate i'm not trying to win like i know how to make a combo deck with legal cards with you know certain limits on it so it doesn't look like you're trying to spike a table you're not right. using the, the most powerful things but still making infinite combos that will destroy everyone you know what i mean like there's ways to play this game that you can spike i, I don't know I, I get it i guess but I think people are way too caught up in this. Way too caught up. I was shocked. I came back and all of my feeds are just full of this nonsense and chatter <laughs> and back and forth and arguments again and again. It's like 50,000 posts on it. I'm like, good God. And like everything on YouTube is someone responding to it. I, I told yeah. Tommy right before we started, I was like, everyone's been talking about this. Do we, <laughs> do we need our opinion? I mean, magic's it's dead. Magic's dead. It's clearly dead. This has killed it completely. Who cares? A I, I get it. I lost money on this. I lost money. My jeweled lotus is worth almost mm -hmm. nothing now, and I have several Nadu. Like I have six, I think, because I pulled them, mm -hmm. and uh, and they were never worth that much, as far as I could tell. No, I, tr no. I tried to sell a few of them, but uh, I think I sold maybe one or two, but I still had a bunch because I opened the heck out of whatever that product was. I don't remember. Modern Horizon that Three. That's what it was. Yeah. So I ended up with a lot of them. So, yep. Oops. Oh, well, too bad. That sucks. Yeah. That's my opinion. Yeah. I am a little sad. I never pulled the trigger on the mana vault before. I mean, mana. Yeah. Mana vault before it spiked up because it was cheap and I almost bought that because mana crib was like really expensive. So I almost just said, oh, I'll just buy the cheaper version. It's no big deal. I don't really care that much. 
because again, I don't really need it in most of my decks. Fair. My most powerful deck doesn't use any of these cards. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't hold expensive magic cards anymore, so I didn't have any of these cards. Yeah. I just I draft and then uh it was mind blowing because I was talking to uh, our friends who were playing Commander with last night, and mm -hmm. uh, they just, I guess they self proclaimed got super deep into magic, but only Commander, but referred to it as magic. It was okay. very interesting. I mean, that is legitimate. And uh, <laughs> so. I was, they were like asking me what like the different types of packs were and stuff like that because basically they went they bought pre cons mm -hmm. uh, and then their them and their friends got really into it and then they looked at the prices of cards and then they decided that they're just going to proxy everything. <laughs> Seems reasonable. They so, have children. Yeah, yeah. Um, Save for the future. Don't buy cards. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. To it was just the different path was yeah. interesting to me and i thought relevant to this discussion because i also asked what they thought because they were like what kind of because they did the roll zero thing and they were like what are we playing and i was like well we're both on just pre-cons julian played a lord of the rings and i played a 40k mm -hmm. uh because that's what i have together and quick to put on the table so i was like they're pre-cons but they're like stronger end precons i'd say both of them are like the sauron one and the necrons yep. yeah agreed. agreed um so some of the more powerful ones in the last couple of years yeah exactly and um so they can hang and they did um we decided i won because we got there and more people were showing up and food was there so uh but the necrons did their thing they filled the board got board wiped Came back, got board wiped, came back. <laughs> we decided it was ended. over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But Sauron, <laughs> Sauron did, there was a big play. Sauron almost took the game. Uh, Sauron came out, amassed five orcs, did its thing, got real big. Uh, and then one of the players decided to sword to plowshare it. So Jillian mm -hmm. gained nine life. And then the next turn brought it back. Amassed yeah. another five orcs, so we're at like she already had it like, from would another. You like to do that again. So she had an orc army of like thirteen, thirteen, ready to swing. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. But yeah, it was fun. But yeah, it didn't impact them, huh? No, they. Uh, uh, they were just like, yeah, we're just gonna play with banned cards, anyways. Yeah, it's fine. And yeah. so they had like crazy competitive decks and they had uh, pre-cons and they had, uh, they were playing, one was playing the Aragorn and one was playing uh, a modified version of the, one of the Doctor Who commanders mm. that was, had the companion or whatever the thing is where there's two of them. Yeah. I will say one thing that came out of this that was interesting um, or that I read recently that I was like, oh, OK, uh, there's about five uh, precons out there that mm -hmm. have these cards or some of these cards in them. So yeah. I'm guessing Dockside and yeah, Jules Dockside was, or something. Yeah. Um, and they basically you buy a product that you should be able to play off the shelf and you can't because yeah. of the band. Yep. Which I, I don't like that because you, you remember when we first started Flesh and Blood and it was yep. like Chain, I think, was yep, like chains. half the deck was was banned yep. already by the time I the bought it. I was stack. like, well, that's that's annoying because you're trying to learn a game. You're trying to get yep. into a game and that sort of thing. Like I that's the one place where I'm like, OK, I agree. That's annoying. That, But other than that, like whatever. But also the Dockside Commander deck, I think that was like 2019. Yeah, they're older. They're so, like, so it's it's minimal impact. Yeah. It's just it's not like someone's going to buy that off the shelf. I don't, yeah, I don't think you're buying that deck by accident. Uh, well, the only way I would disagree is if people are like learning via online and they're just, you know, looking up like by searching EDH rec or something, you know, well, what yeah, I mean? like but they, now it'll show up they, as banned. If they, yeah, if they randomly come across some sort of recommended deck, you know, 
article or whatever for oh, something sure. they're trying to do. But yeah, it's so slim and there's yeah. so many decks out there. Like go pick yeah. another one. Yeah. And and go big deal. Like you get it in one cards band. Big deal. Play it at your kitchen table like you were yeah. gonna. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then when you realize it's banned, you just replace it or with something you know, whatever. You're yeah. probably gonna tear it apart anyways. That's what most people end up doing with precon. So yeah. who cares? It's yeah. Again, I don't see it as a huge impact, but it is what no. it is. No, it's fine. Um Interestingly, uh, Mana Crypts are the highest selling, well, one of the highest selling singles right now. Mm -hmm. well, uh, probably because everyone's it, just thinking that there's no way this sticks. But also, that, it's available in other formats. Yeah, and I think people are just dumping them. I think that's yeah. why the price keeps dropping. So people are like, that's a great deal. And maybe haven't heard about the ban yet or just whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, or just, and other hey, formats, I'll play like that say. card. Yeah, I'll exactly. Roll, like Roll zero care. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other ones that are up there are the one ring, uh, mm -hmm. which actually has come down in price. So I'm I think guessing, people were getting nervous that it was going to get. I was about to say, I think you're seeing a lot of people that were hoarding that uh, push it out because it is a bit of a, a card. Um, and then Grim Monolith, which is not all that. I wonder if it just causes different. hesitancy and has a ripple effect of cards may not hit those values for a while just because stores i don't know you know what i mean i guess supply and demand tells that anyways but yeah i think there's just a um it's like you have to think bigger stores would have multiple copies of all these cards that's true like how yeah. would it, how would it would it affect a store i guess because it's i don't i don't if know you had like does not... if you're a big store and you had dozens of these yeah but if you're a store the only one that's actually impactful is Jeweled Lotus, I think, because it can't be used in any other way. Right. Everything else is still valid in other formats. So True. it's fine to keep it on the shelf and then you just have to reprice it down to what the market is you know, bearing. Right. So it sucks, but it's not like Jeweled Lotus is the only one that's like, OK, you can throw it away now because you can't do anything with it. Basically, right. I wouldn't. But, you know, as no. a store, it becomes a. Do I keep this on the shelf, even though I really shouldn't be selling this because then it makes me look bad? You know, like that's the one yeah. where it's like, yeah, you can take a reputation. Everything else, there's a legitimate reason to keep it on the shelf. Yeah. So, um, so I don't know. I honestly, that'd be interesting to ask a bigger store, like what they think about how to handle this. I, I don't know how they how they would handle it, honestly. Yeah. But yeah, it's a thing. I'm sorry for those that lost money. One of my buddies had a whole, he showed a page of his binder and he had uh, the fancy um, mana crypt from Kaladesh. Yeah. And that's sad because that yeah. was like, I don't know, six, eight hundred dollars, whatever ridiculously pricey card. And it's now not. Yeah. Still worth something. Um, sure. Yeah, they're all worth something. Hundred bucks. Yeah, but it's it's definitely dropped in value significantly. And he had he had several, <laughs> he had several of each card. It was, I feel bad for him. But uh, I mean, and the Kaladesh one still six, almost seven hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, it, it was up. It's come down. It bounced back up a little bit. Like I was actually a little sad that I missed the pickup because I would have bought some of these cards uh, yeah. when they hit their lows. But now they're all pretty much recovered a little bit and honestly i'm like i don't need to spend this kind of money on cards right now yeah, yeah. so no, that's fair i owe other people money for cards that i've asked them to get for me <laughs> <laughs> that's why i'm like I, don't, I can't spend on this stuff yeah our one buddy's selling a bunch of uh rares and mythics and whatever sent a, sent a list and i was like i need to check my inventory when i get home because i i don't know what i have i'm in another country <laughs> uh can can you hold on to them until i'm back and i'll check and then i'll see what i want to buy off you but there was okay. uh oh god what's it called ancient tomb which i re i do want that because one it's an old card i think it's reserve list i'm pretty sure it is and uh and it's in a bunch of decks like it's in a ton of stuff as fast mana uh so anyways he he had that i was like i'll take that and then there's another card on the list i looked up and i was like i definitely don't own that and i want that so um i was like so at minimum those two and then maybe some more but i need to check if i own some of these because i can't remember if i bought them or not i don't think it's reserve list no ancient tomb no because it was yeah. reprinted uh it's balan's tomb in the lord of the rings commander set oh yeah you're right yeah it's not reserve list it's just a a good card yeah so anyways, 
and I've wanted it for a while. I've definitely, I, I actually bid on it on eBay a couple of times. I'm like, I'm willing to take it for a discount, but I'm not really willing yeah, to, that's to spend the price for it. And he was willing to give me a bit of a discount because he was going to sell it to a store, which would only give him 60%. Right. Yep. So, you know, yep. He gives me a discount. And he's still getting more and it's a win-win for everyone. Yep. So, yeah. Um, so anyways, yeah, I don't care. It's sad for people that are really upset about it, but I just don't think it's really that big of a deal because it's a casual format for the most part. And for yep. tournaments, the people that play the super hardcore tournaments. Now, I don't know if there's regular EDH tournaments, then I could feel like I, that's something I'm unaware of one. And two, if that exists, then I can understand people being upset that are really into that world, but I didn't yeah. know it existed. Um, CEDH, I feel like those guys probably just got a, a freaking holiday surprise. Now they're probably mad about the value loss of their cards, but they spend ridiculous amounts of money. And so this is probably not a big portion of their value. Yeah. And they love solving decks. And now so it's this a, now there's new just, yeah. yeah, this just made a whole new puzzle for them. So I, I honestly, if I was fully engaged in that world, I know I would be excited by this. I'd yeah. be upset, but I'd be excited because it's like, oh, we have to solve everything again, you know? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> now I that is always when it's the most fun. That, and I feel like Commander doesn't get that very often. Especially CEDH. It's yeah. been locked into like a very structured format for a long time. But I did hear that this, because of extortionist impact, it... um it cuts out certain colors or color combinations and essentially guarantees that the thoracal um, skeleton or whatever is the most efficient in the game. Um, which, I mean, it's blue, so it should be. <laughs> That's just how blue is. It wins. True. Thassa should always be the winner. <laughs> Trying to see. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's... I. It seems like it's a bigger deal for those who had a bunch of these cards, and obviously. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's a game, and now things are being changed. So, yeah. new puzzle to it's solve. It's a game. These are game pieces. You can make money on them, but that's a luck thing. That's not a, uh, it, well, there are ways to make it less luck based, but that's a diversified portfolio of sealed products across multiple <laughs> time frames. Like that's, that's yes. how everyone says to do it. If you want to actually make money on it, trying to bet on singles is no. a fool's yeah. errand, especially with how often things get reprinted. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yep. Now, I will say, a little shady mm -hmm. that they just released Mana Crypt in a set uh, not that long ago. And they clearly Excellent. knew this was coming. Yeah. Yeah. Those special colored ones, right? Yeah. Yeah, they were. Yeah. yeah. Those are expensive cards. So, the yeah, the ridiculous, like, 10 grand rare pink mm -hmm. one or whatever the heck the red it is. One, yeah. 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 Um, was that in that? Was that that? The Exelon collectors. That's what that made the Exelon collectors go crazy. Gotcha. Just making sure that I'm not finding it. Is it pulled off TCG player? I'm only finding the one. No, they're on there. Um, red okay. still, uh, the, uh, the one's 15,000. Okay, yeah, I see it. I see it. Oh, 74,000. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, in the market. There's only one available. Yeah. yeah, that's the problem. Like, okay, so rare, no one's buying it, whatever. Like, yeah. I don't, I, again, no one's buying that to be a mana crypt. They're buying it to no. put on a shelf because yes. it's a rare card, card that won't yeah. be printed that way again. You know, like, yeah, I don't, I, <laughs> I don't Whatever. But the fact that they did just release this and they probably knew this band was coming, it's yeah. a little shady. But since when has uh, Watsi not been shady and done shady stuff? Like, yeah. That's, that's, that's pretty standard. They do it all the time and they reprint stuff all the time. 
And then they come up with new ways to get people to buy cards all the time. It's just what they do. Yep. Yeah. Well, and then another theory is, oh, they're just going to print other similar cards, but are more powerful or something or similar, do similar things. And then those will be the new chase and Marvel or yeah. Final you Fantasy or chase it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's possible. It's possible. It's trying to uncreep, unpower creep, basically. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. Yeah, that's, I mean, and that's then, a thing. So, to allow you to recreep. Yeah, that's a thing. It might happen. <laughs> I mean, these are I don't like... know. Do you think they work that closely with this rules committee, though? I don't think they work that closely. I've, with them. I think it's definitely a timing thing because they said they wanted to ban Joel Lotus beforehand, but it just came out in Commander Masters last year. Yeah, no, I agree with the they they might say they're gonna do it. Watsy says, please hold off. You know, yeah, sort until of we thing. sell through the product, and then yeah, yeah, I agree. That's probably a thing, but I don't think they're planning products based on input from the rules committee. Well, as in, I don't think you'll see a jewel lotus. Like if there isn't a commander set coming up, but if there was, I don't think you would see a jewel lotus in it. Oh yeah, because like, what if they they can't print the jewel lotus as a chase card anymore? That's correct. I see what you mean. Yeah. Right. So know. you can't have yeah, a new fancy Joel Lotus coming. in the next commander because there's going to be another commander format or set. So does this get into a pissing match? Do they print <laughs> the jeweled Lotus petal that does the exact same thing? But uh, now it's a different card that then they have to ban that a separate time. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't think print, that will uh, happen. You would have to. Mechanically similar cards, yeah. There's Mechan a million, yeah. yeah there's yeah. a million elf, one one elves that tap for one green. Like, yes, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? So yes, they could literally yeah. just give it a different name. True. I don't know if they would, because like, what's the point? Right. That doesn't make sense. Because then everyone just pulls out their jeweled lotuses again, and they're like, "This is a jeweled lotus petal." Yeah, exactly. Or just buy the cheap jeweled lotus that's on discount. Yeah. And then do they stay on discount because do the does the rules committee ban actually matter to enough people? Well, that's like the we've thing. had this shock. Yes. But yeah. does it stay? I don't think it does. I don't I don't think this is going to matter for the majority of commander players. And I think the backlash on this is it could, making the so rules committee even less relevant. That's, because that's where I was going to go. Yeah. And yeah. like do. But also, does it get more people to just be like, all right, I'm just going to proxy now. <laughs> like does does honestly like if you lost enough money on this and you weren't following the rules of don't put yeah. in what you can't afford like it may yeah. just be that player may just be like i'm just proxying everything now yeah i'm never i'm never gonna spend money on cards again like yeah. big money yeah i'm not gonna risk it because it so does be the small money. tcg niche lose high-end spenders it's a good question on singles good question so all these ripple effects towards, that we can't answer, yeah, but just yeah. things certainly that not going towards in. old cards. I'll tell you that. No, they are still way down. I'm actually thinking about picking up uh, slowly a set of um, dual lands because nice. they're actually useful and they're cheap as hell compared to what they were at the highs. So, oh, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, they've come down quite a bit. I'll be honest, though, it's really hard to pull the trigger on that. And you know I've spent stupid money on magic. Yep. And I'm just like, do I really want it? Do I want the real one? Yep. Do I care that much? Do you? And the answer is I don't really. And I have proxies for them all. So I don't really. And I mostly play at a table. I don't play at a shop. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's where it comes in. Like, am I going to play at a shop? Am I going to play at a table? Do people care? My groups don't care about proxies. We've always had proxies. So. Yeah. Um, I don't, but I also don't play Commander that much in person. Yeah. And I'm, I don't know, for me, it's like, I kind of want them because they're old. They remind me of my childhood a little bit. So that's the like, that's where I'm like, kind of, do I want them? Kind of. But the reality is like, I don't know, there's much better uses of my money, especially right now. Yeah. Um, so it's tough. It's tough. Tough call. Tough call. Yeah. Good news for people that lost money on Mana Crypt. Uh, they almost certainly had Mana Vault as well because that's the type <laughs> of cards they are. Um, and Mana Vault went up yeah. almost equal amount that Mana Crypt went down. Well, there you go. So they didn't lose money, maybe. Maybe. <laughs>
Jewel Lewis is the only the only one that's a true bummer, like a complete bummer. Yeah. All right. Well, that was a fun topic. People yeah, get emotional. It was interesting. Yeah. I just thought it was. I just I couldn't talk about it without you because you're the more sure. commander player. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I had opinions. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny though. I you know I'm not gonna be the guy who's like no 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 we can't play with a banned card but like my the buddy that's was really upset about it and was like screw that we're we're allowing it you know I was yeah. like well I mean it's banned though like mentally that's where my first yeah, yeah. <laughs> my first response was Same. like well it's banned and I was like well actually I don't give a crap because the the reason I don't care is because we don't push the limits you know what I mean yeah. of power like we we explicitly try to play very mid power, not seven, not eight, not nine, but like mid power. Right. Um, and we all try to look out to make sure that we're playing somewhat equally. Like if a deck is too powerful, we'll switch that one out and try to make it nice. So, so I don't worry about abuse of him having it and using it. You know what I mean? Cause if mm -hmm. he has it, it's not going to lead to an explosive, you know, kill the table turn three situation. Cause that's not how we play. So it's like, it really right. has no impact. That's so why I'm like, yeah, go ahead and use that. I don't care. It's just a little extra mana. Yeah. Yeah. I have was planning on drafting Duskmorn, but I haven't had a chance yet. Yeah. I was wondering. Yeah. Been busy, but um by this time next week i will definitely be able to talk dust more because i'm i have all my gold saved i just haven't had time to sit down and play it but i am looking forward to it i've heard good things about the limited format is all i have on that but. yeah people seem excited about it i have not uh delved in too much myself that is a priority for this week, though. <clears throat> I don't even know if I'm going to buy any product. I haven't bought any yet. Yeah. I, I kind of, I'm like, I want to, I'm thinking I will buy and open a collector box when the price comes down. Yeah. Like, but that's pretty much all I care about. Like, that's the only thing mentally I'm interested in. If I hear the commander decks, there's one that's really good, I may pick up something that's interesting because they definitely have some interesting mechanics amongst them. Sure. Um, but I have, I was just looking at my stuff because of that sale yeah. and I have so many commander decks I bought specifically because I'm going to make a deck out of this at some point. Yep. yep. I, have, I have like a dozen loose commander decks, like individual commander decks. And then a few commander deck cases, like that's the full set, right? right. But those are for resale. Like I bought those sure. specifically to sell later. These ones I literally bought to keep because I was going to do something with them and they're on my shelf and I have a dozen of them in it. So I have such behind. a backlog. Yeah. yeah. I that's... have such a backlog that I haven't even opened yet. They're literally unopened. That's how I feel about limited boxes. Is yeah. like, I was like, I don't need any more. I, I could get limited boxes. I am interested in this set, but yeah. I have a backlog of limited boxes. That exactly. We to draft. Uh, what am I going to do? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, same. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes you overdo it. Yeah. You got to pull back a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, if there's a deal on them, I'll grab them. Well, that's kind of my my thought. I was like, okay, if there's like an Amazon sale, if there's mm -hmm. something going on, then then I'll jump on it. And we do have Black Friday coming up, you know, that's so true. we'll probably get a chance to get some some good deals around there, and I'll probably grab something then. But it's definitely not worried about it. Definitely not price watching. I'm not even really worried about replacing that Bloomboro I opened for the shelf. I'm more of the offloading opinion than the uh, onloading new stuff. Yeah, yeah, I know. There's Oh, you mentioned Amazon. I know they have that like October 8th through 10th. They're having a big sale. So I bet you some magic stuff will be on sale then. Oh, that's worth looking at because those usually sell out quickly when that happens. Mm -hmm. To know. Um, Star Wars. There's been a yeah, bunch of grief getting... about uh, their tournament stuff. Uh -oh. They announced and a lot of the events. I think they were like what size they were but like these they're smaller than battle fab battle hardens but bigger than pro quests kind of a thing mm -hmm. and uh they all sold out like really quick 
they're like $40 entry, but like pricing was optional for stores. And so you don't really, you kind of have to sign up for these events, not knowing what the pricing is, which is no, great. Uh, and then they announced the, what the pricing is going to be from uh, FFG, like the cards and stuff. And everyone mm -hmm. was like, these are bad. Promise. Oh no, that stinks. And so there's just a lot of lack of enthusiasm around those events. But uh, if you want more detail, listen to uh, the Golden Dice podcast. I was talking to Scott last night and he was going over it. And I guess their most recent podcast goes into it pretty deep. So go give those guys a listen. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I need to get back into Star Wars, but at the same time, I don't have a deck that I'm like thrilled playing right now. Mm. Um, and the new expansion, I just keep seeing the new cards for clones and stuff, and my mind's working. And because there hasn't been token generation before, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and now there's token generation, is the time big to go thing. wide time to go wide. Um, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the clones gain the benefit, um, of if you have three or more units on the field, but they're harder to get clone tokens because they're two twos instead of the droids that are one ones. Uh, so usually it's like create two clones or three droids. Um, but a lot of the clone cards get benefits from having three or more units on the field. And then the droids are kind of like Rakdos where they it's sacrifice them to get out bigger things. Uh, so it's like uh, they have exploit. So it's like sacrifice X or sacrifice a creature and decrease the cost of this by two. Right. So right. you get rid of your one, one droid and then play your six drop for four kind of a thing. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. Cheating resources. Yeah. And they have one of those, uh, I forget the technical term for them, but, uh, the droid, the vehicle that the like droids pop out of, the like triangle, oh, yeah, the carrier thing. The carrier yeah, I know thing. What you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. There's one of those, and when it attacks, you create a droid token, which is kind of cool. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. So the new set seems super cool. I'm into it. I'm not gonna be doing what I did for set one and two. I'm gonna be buying singles. Yeah, you're just no no openings at all. Uh, I will draft. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. I may grab a box or two, kind of a thing, but yeah, nothing, nothing major, not not even a case. Yeah, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do for my uh, addiction to opening cards because I don't have anything I want to open, <laughs> 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 but I like opening cards. So what what am I gonna do? The itch is coming back. I've been I've been back stateside for 48 hours. I gotta I gotta open something. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you have on your shelf? Turn around. Oh no! I, I have a bunch <laughs> of stuff on my shelf. None of it's worthy of opening. I've checked, I double checked everything uh, before I left, and I opened the last few things that I was interested in opening because of the EV versus like you know right sale, right. sale value or whatever. There's like two boxes. I think it was um. Okay, so you Lord. looked. What were the boxes that are worth opening right now? Right now, none. That's the yeah. problem. I opened the last few. No, um, but no, not the ones that you have, but that if you had them would be worth. Oh, uh, well, what I did open, uh, I can tell you was worth it. I don't know if it still is because I haven't looked recently. It was Theros Beyond Death, mm -hmm. which I thought that was actually fun to open and inspired a few new things, um, a few new ideas for decks. And then what was the other one? That was like a good one. There was a set box I opened that was worth it. I can't find it. A uh, Strict Haven set was worth opening, which actually... I have a feeling that was a mistake because what's happening, uh, or oh, rumor is that we're going to revisit Strixhaven soon. So you right, know those right. are going to jump up now. The good news is I have another Strixhaven set box sitting around in the basement, and I have a bunch of Strixhaven draft, I believe. So I'll still make out on that, but that one box I probably shouldn't have opened. But I don't care. I wanted to open it. Yeah. Um, and that was a... a trip down memory lane like nothing else I'll tell oh you i that. bet i bet yeah that that one was really fun i really enjoy opening that it did not inspire any new decks because i know all those cards because yeah. 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 <laughs> that was a set i played the heck out of yes um 
but yeah, it's it's fine. There's nothing I need to open. And then I have all my collector boxes behind me. I'm not opening those uh, unless I sell one for double the price like we did with uh, Lord, <laughs> Lord of the Rings. Rings. Yeah. yeah. Or triple the price. Triple the price. Guess, yeah. Yeah. Those are still doing well. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's uh, the collector box thing seems to be working just fine. It's the one place where I'm like, do I just keep this pattern up because making money is nice? <laughs> and uh, I have made money off of this magic obsession pretty effectively. Mm -hmm. I think the downside to it is it creates this desire to open more stuff. And I am, again, running out of space. Like I just yeah. put away a whole uh, organized set of cards for uncommons and my uncommons box is full. So now I got to go alpha it and then pull out duplicates beyond like two or three copies because... Mm -hmm. I know some of them, I have like eight copies of something in there, right? But they're yeah. not alphabetized. So it's like not the easiest thing to figure out which ones I have what of and how many. Yep. Blah, blah. So I got to go and alphabetize it, which is not my favorite because then it will be alphabetized and then I want to put stuff in there without alphabetizing and it gets out of order again. <laughs> it's like the endless cycle that yeah. I don't like. I try to avoid yeah. it at all costs. I want to open cool. cards, but I don't want cards. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I don't yeah. want the cards. I just want to open them. Yes. Um, <laughs> So yeah, that's exactly it's <laughs> that's the problem. That is the curse. I'm stuck. So uh, so yes, generally speaking, I think I'm trying to move away from uh, tempting myself by continuing to get new stuff to open and do that with. Fair, uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I just got back from a trip, so I'm less uh, bored at home than I usually am, and that is fair. definitely a driver of my desire to open. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Sitting at home, nothing to do. Ah, uh, let's sort some cards. Well, this is fun. What about opening some cards? So I could sort some more cards. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. <laughs> I'm in danger. Yeah. Uh, speaking of new stuff to open, and I don't know how much I'm going to open, uh, Sorcery is out in a week, I think, I believe. Maybe a week and a half, something like that. Soon, very soon. Um, apparently, people are starting to leak uh, card pictures, which they specifically came out and said, don't do that. Yeah. If you're going to do it, do it here um, so that it doesn't spoil it for other people, uh, which I think is nice because it's definitely part of the experience is opening and yeah, seeing for stuff sure. for the first time. It definitely makes you feel like a kid. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and that's where I'm worried about, like, what am I going to do? Because I think I only got two boxes. It's two or three. I can't remember which. Um, I think it's only two. And I definitely want one for the shelf. But do I open the other one or do I just keep two for the shelf? Because I, I tend to like to keep two for the shelf so that I can sell one and then open the other you know, for free, essentially, once I sell the one for profit. Yeah. Um, but I kind of think I'm going to want to experience this, so. I that's right. I mean, it's once yeah. a year. Well, that's the thing. Do I just open it and say, screw it? And if I want something for the shelf, then I'll just buy more because it'll be around. It'll be around. You know, so it's like, that's where I'm like torn against. The problem is you set these rules and you're disciplined by the rules and that's how you make money. That's yeah. true in all sorts of investable but is, things. But is, is sorcery a money or is it sorcery? Is yeah, exactly. It is. That's what that's, I'm saying. That's, that's where it's like, yeah. I should be able to break the rule, but it's when you break that discipline, you break the discipline. You know what I mean? If, so if it's by game, game though, I think it's separable by game. Like, because I, I open magic, but I open it to play a game, right? Yeah. And I'm, but then. Uh, with like Pokemon, I buy, it sits on the shelf. I don't open. Like it's completely separate. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Sorcery is just my uh, indulgence. Yeah. Yeah. It's my, like my Once limited. Year, I open stuff yeah. and just because I want to open stuff. That's actually not a bad idea. And of all the things to open that give me the most joy, well, at least so far, we'll see how this set goes. Sorcery has been the most fun. I right. enjoyed opening the heck out of sorcery more so than anything I've opened in a long right. time. Right, so that I've... increases the value for you. Yeah, that was. A lot I'm just fun. trying to help you justify it. But... Yeah, and and it's two boxes, <laughs> and, and it's again, it's not a big yeah, and there are cards that you're gonna play with. 
They are, yeah. There's already someone was trying to set me up for a, there's an event happening at a store. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm out of town. I'm like, I'm in Ireland. Sorry, I can't. Yeah, this, yeah. this calendar stinks. I'm very <laughs> glad to be able to travel the world and see yeah. all these things because it's amazing. It's getting into, uh, into your card time. Yeah, exactly. It's cutting into my card time. What the heck? <laughs> I guess I just got to schedule at different times. Yeah. Um, Scotland was a blast, by the way, for anyone who cares. Yeah. Uh, definitely worth it. Isle of Skye, very cool place. Lots going on there. Uh, and then Ireland will be amazing, I'm sure, because these trips are always amazing. And that's in two weeks. So lots of travel. Lots of travel. Favorite moment from the trip? Ooh, that's a good question. That's a tough question. Um, we had a running gag, so I'm going to say it's probably this because it made us laugh the most, but it could be any number of things other than this because there was a lot of really cool places that we got to see. But the running gag was I went to take a picture of a building. This was like day one. And my friend Aaron, who I was there with, uh, like turned around and looked at me at just the perfect time where the corner of the picture is taken up by like a corner of his face, including his eye. Right. So it's like this goofy picture where like his eye and part of his foreheads in the picture. And it made me laugh so much. that I was like, Oh, I got to do that again. So I, throughout the trip, I took as many pictures as I could. And he posed for a bunch of them uh, to just get half of his face or part of his face in the, in the frame to cause like, to make it look like he's floating there or whatever, like make goofy things. And, uh, and so at the end we were talking about it, like through the whole time laughing about it and like we set up all these different weird shots and stuff. And so I sent all of those pictures to him and it's just, it, it was hilarious. It was a lot of fun. So favorite moment when my friend turned around at an awkward time and put a corner of his forehead <laughs> into the shot because it made, it made a running joke for the rest of the trip. Of course. Uh, of course. But yeah, I mean the, the guided tour stuff was awesome. Um, the Fairy Glen was beautiful and amazing, like totally nice. cool place. Um, we went up to the top of this mountain area in the highlands, and uh, I climbed some stairs to just seem to go up forever into the clouds. Uh, That's that neat. was gorgeous, like just crazy. And and I, it's not like gorgeous in the way like you see views from the top of a mountain when you're no. hiking, but it was it's just majestic, I guess is the best way to put yeah, it. Like you're yeah. just up oh, on that. this really high hill and everyone's tiny below you. And it's just something else. And it's all like rough stairs. They're not like even, you know, it's like a bunch of stones stuck yeah. there, but they're not evenly stuck there. It's just kind of like a path. Um, it's just, it was cool. There was so many cool things there. It was just a really cool trip. So I'm really nice. looking forward to going back next year with you guys. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah, we did something similar. We didn't we didn't make it up to the highlands. We stuck uh, to the southern part of Scotland. But when we were in Edinburgh, we climbed uh, Arthur's Seat. And then, so you get that mountaintop view, but then you're looking down on Edinburgh. Oh, nice. I heard about that. And then you can see over the water and to the other side, and it's really pretty. That's cool. Because it's just south of Edinburgh. Oh, Cava... Cava, Calvo, Karn, Karen. I don't know how you say these things. Um, highly recommended by the tour guide for mm-hmm. ancient places that cool. are seeable. I think it's near Inverness, which we did not go to. So I don't know what that town's like, but apparently it's a pretty nice big town. Yeah, we were um, there one day, one night, one afternoon worth, and, and an evening. Was it was it like a good town or was it crappy? Um, I, mean, I would look up. Crappy. No, it wouldn't be crappy. No, it's just um, the time we spent there, we enjoyed, but it was more of a rest stop for us. Yeah. But we also didn't really look around to see what to do. It was like how, like, but the time we were coming in and the time we were leaving, it just didn't really make sense to do things. Yeah, gotcha. Um, But it was a really cute town and I'm sure there are things to do. Okay. Yeah. Well, I definitely, it, that's a high priority for me yeah. on the trip is to try to get out to that place. Cause we didn't have any ancient sites on this journey. Um, it just, the tour just didn't go near them and there just aren't that many, I guess. So we got a few castles. we got a, a lot of natural, you know, beautiful places, rivers, mountains, et cetera. Um, and I enjoyed that part, but I, I asked the guy, I was like, are we going to be anywhere near any? And can we do like an offshoot to him? He's like, no, nah, there's none here. He's like, I recommend going to that one. Yeah, Inverness. So I was like, well, I got to make that a priority then because I didn't get to see any ancient sites. I love seeing standing stones and all that crazy stuff. I think stuff. it was a castle. 
we saw in Inverness, maybe. I don't. I don't know. I'm trying to remember, but yeah, I'm pretty sure. I think that might have been the castle where they held. Uh, what's that show called? Dang it! The uh, the really the popular yeah, where they get kicked out or whatever, and there's someone the traitor or something. No, not traitors. Uh, um. It's not Bridgerton, but it's Downton Abbey. Oh, oh. Uh, there was a Christmas dinner filmed in one of the castles, and they used their dining room. And they have all this, like, gold tableware and china and stuff. And that's all laid out in the castle. So, like, when you walk in, it looks like you're at the dinner kind of thing. That's cool. But it's also, like, a museum that you walk through, the castle. Sure. Yeah. Very neat. Um, I think that was Inverness. The castles are did. very different in Scotland than Ireland. I will say that. Yes. Yes. They are uh, much more kept up or museum like. Yes. Yeah. And they're not ruins, which good and bad. Cool yes. to see like some of the stuff, active history. Some of them are yeah. like sort of lived in still sort of thing, you know, mm -hmm. uh, not cool and that you don't get to go through creepy old ruins, which is sure. so fun. Yeah. I love that stuff. Yeah. So yeah, it was an interesting trade-off. I was actually surprised there were so few castles in Scotland. Uh, Cause I feel like when you're going around Ireland, it's like every 10 minutes you see a <laughs> castle ruin off to the side and you're just like, Oh, there's another ruin. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, Oh, what was it? Yeah. We mentioned historic or like ancient stuff. We can definitely hit. Uh, and I do want to go back to, uh, the Devil's Pulpit, which was a yeah. Druidic sacrifice spot. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, was that was cool. one of the ones on the list. I mm -hmm. I, yeah, I wanted to make it to that Karn if I can. Yeah. Clavicarn, I think it's saying. Clavicarn, something like that. Yeah. I wrote it down. I took a bunch of notes. Cool. Well, now we're just talking about other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this is the podcast. You made it to the end. That's right. You made it to the end where we're talking about random things that we like to talk about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, anything else you want to wrap up this podcast with? No, I don't think so. Cool. I think I'm good. Well, until next week, we'll catch you guys later. Have a good one.